So next up, we have our keynote speaker. Uh, I've known Dave for many, many years, and I'm, I'm very, very excited to have him presenting today uh, for our keynote. Um, Dave Monier is a Team Cymru Fellow at Team Cymru Inc., uh, a specialized internet research firm based in Lake Mary, Florida. Uh, Team Cymru uses data-driven intelligence to assist in understanding the real impact of cybercrime. Dave excels at describing the complex nature of the cyber underground and its players to executives and technologists alike. Uh, understanding that real world security involves both technology and business considerations, Dave helps organizations to fully understand their security and policy decisions. As a result, Dave has traveled the world presenting security ideas and solving organizations' hardest problems. With over 20 years of experience in a wide range of technologies, Dave brings a wealth of knowledge and understanding to every situation. Uh, he began his career performing Unix and Linux administration in academic and high performance computing environments, where he helped build some of the most powerful computational systems of their day. After systems administration, Dave moved into internet security, serving as a lead security engineer for a Big Ten university, and later helped to launch the research and education networking ISAC, part of the formal US ISAC community. Dave was invited to join Team Cymru in 2007, where he served as a senior engineer and later as a security evangelist. In 2010, Dave was granted the title of Team Cymru Fellow, a highest honor of Team Cymru. Dave has led multiple teams as part of Team Cymru, ranging from engineering, outreach, threat intelligence, sales, marketing, and client success. Uh, clearly has done it all, uh, and I am very, very excited to hand this over to Dave. Thank you again for your time today. Thank you, Keith, uh, for the kind introductions and thanks to the Zeke team uh, for the opportunity to come and speak to you today. Uh, I've long been a fan of the project uh, and the community that it fosters. Uh, I hope you'll bear with me as I read from this prepared note. Uh, it's unfortunate that we have to do this uh, pandemic style. Uh, I would much prefer uh, to be standing in front of you uh, and it's not quite the same experience having to have beers alone after the track finishes, uh, though it's probably results in fewer uh, arguments uh, over, you know, like proper capture methods or stack tuning parameters, things like that. So I pondered a bit uh, for what idea I could present to you uh, that would be worth your time as a keynote. Uh, something important that I hoped uh, would make you think uh, and perhaps reflect. Uh, and in the end, I decided current affairs and our role in it uh, would be a good topic. Uh, I promise it won't run long. So today I'd like to talk to you about our place uh, in the future of network defense, uh, our position as centurions at the gates of digital abandon, uh, or the surveyors of the electronic realm, uh, as keepers of the record uh, of what has been said on a network, or as many would cast us to be uh, in the age of perceptive privacy, uh, the all-seeing evil eye of Sauron, uh, invading lives and crushing privacy. Recording the movements and always watching, uh, as we all know, the idea of network monitoring has become a sensitive topic in today's world. Uh, not just wire monitoring, as we gather today to discuss, uh, but in any form, uh, ranging from payloads uh, to metadata. As society is waking up uh, to the monitoring and tracking we're subject to in our digital lives, uh, it has become obvious uh, that many considered this to be an assault on their right to privacy. Uh, that anyone observing is an intruder, regardless of that person being party or not to the communication, that no amount of observation is allowable. And to be honest, it's hard not to see their position as valid. After all, it is the case that what topics you might discuss on social media platforms can be turned into advertiser leads. It is in fact true that marketers and advertisers have created demand for user data things like DNS queries, sites visited, uh, even browser cookie data uh, has all proven valuable uh, for the predicting the buying habits of internet users. It is true that hedge funds in particular around, commo around commodity trading uh, track communication patterns uh, to help decide their next investments. That entire social networks have been stood up just to act as culture collectors like an aquarium to study the behaviors of fish or similar to an ant farm built to see into the lives of its inhabitants. These things are all true. Understandably, the marketing and advertising world are very motivated uh, to know and predict these things and not always at the expense of users. After all, marketing and advertising has paid for much of the innovation we've seen in the online world. 
They have employed tens of, if not hundreds of thousands of people directly to create, correct, collect, and understand what patterns can be identified in a user's online life in a way that can help determine what they may buy next. These investments materialize in some of the most popular services on the internet, things like email, chat, e-commerce. The companies like Facebook and Google have stimulated the global economy in ways we may never fully understand, providing services that bring people together, enable communications, and arguably make the world a better place, all in the name of monitoring, all in the name of data collection. How many companies are born every day, every week or every year with the intent of harnessing internet data and applying it? How many companies will be built this year with the intent of delivering eyeballs to the internet and its content? How much network capacity will be added to the internet due to the demand of interest using that the users bring? We may never know, and to that end, we may never actually care. Because for users, to them, they are surveilled by forces unseen in a universe largely unknown. So you see, to most of the population, this is all magic. Technology as a whole is some demonstration of mystical powers dreamed up in a science fiction film. You could ask an audience at any other gathering to describe a simple function like, for example, sending electronic mail. And you'll see the magic that I'm speaking of. People would use words like open or click to describe how a message is crafted, sent, and received. Never would they mention a protocol like SMTP and certainly not a concept like MTU or TTL. The vast majority of people simply do not know anything of the underlying technologies that they desperately cling to. And this is just one example. There are countless others that are just as relied upon uh, and but also not understood. So given this shortage of understanding of how and why the internet came to be, it's easy to imagine the worries of its users who believe that their every move watched and monetized that their electronic lives are only a mystery to them, but not at, not only uh, a mystery to them, but also at the mercy of those who do understand and provide it. Uh, the wizards of the internet, if you will, uh, that make the magic happen. Now, this degree of narcissism isn't limited only to those in the digital realm. There continues to be a great divide amongst those people uh, that service the capabilities that make the internet. Degrees of expertise range wildly from operator to admin, from user to author. Even here in the audience of highest levels of technical understanding, there is a huge gap between those uh, new to the idea of packet capture and those who have mastered the concepts of electronic wiretap. We can think of this gap to be similar to the difference between a magician and a wizard. The magician may know tricks and some sleight of hand, but it's the wizard who is able to uh, use real magics and summon amazing creations from the ether. And these amazing creations are what we're here to discuss during Zeek Week. Here at this conference, we gather to discuss the study of amazing creations made by the select few who truly understand the technical world around us. We gather to discuss the recordings we make that happen to capture these echoes of magics deployed in enterprises around the world, sometimes even against us. We come together to talk about ways to measure and index the one component of the technical wizardry that this modern age that we stand a chance of maintaining, and that's the network. Because the network, unlike the complex layers that make up a modern computational system, is considerably more finite. It lends far fewer places to hide. There aren't, at least as of yet, beasts such as the Rohammer attack and things like the moments like that on the network. There aren't as many components that need to be addressed when things go awry, and the mystical creations of digital wizards are easier to see on the network whether they be beacons to some far off uh, command and control server, or whether they be DNSRRs in search of an answer for a client system, or even ones we never expected, the electronic black swans, if you will. It's here on the network layer that RFC much more closely is the rule of the land. It's here where much of the magics used by the great wizards must play on a much more uh, level playing field where more of us can apply our efforts, even if only in the most basic form of packet capture, to better understand the workings and wars of these digital wizards, where beacons of data, signal, <clears throat> signals, and tre uh, treasures to remote locations. It's pursuit of these black swans that we focus, as we'll see this week, with experts bringing their skills to bear uh, to record, measure, and index the packets that make up the digital world. These are the hunters of black swans, Hunters like Fatima uh, Awala, 
James Hughes, Fuang Kao, and Nick Turley, who today will show us that even common protocols and standards can still yield interesting insights. For it's only through deeper study of these protocols and technologies that will allow us to better understand how they can play a role in the network ecosystem. And hunters like Jeff Rowe, Vlad Gardescu, Scott Campbell, James Madelbon, and Adam Pumphrey, who will later today uh, show us better ways to perfect our hunting efforts and how to optimize our hunting tactics for the modern world. Because change is inevitable and perfecting our methods is a must if we're to stay in front of our adversaries. And lastly, hunters like Jamin Becker, who will, who will make hunting easier for all uh, with the help of collaboration and distribution. For unlike kinetic game hunters, the hunters of black swans know the value of community and collaboration. There's plenty of game for us all to enjoy the hunt. These are just some of the seekers of black swans, members of the black, hunt, black swan hunting club, not necessarily to surveil, but to index and account for the magical beast that we might discover. For as long as there are wizards in the world, we will need people to collect and index the signals they produce during their battles. Zeke and tools like it allow mere mortals to capture these echoes and prove they happened, that the boogeyman is real, that ghosts are real. And even if the end result is to say, we don't know exactly what this is, but we're certain that this is it, Zeke helps to find these black swans. So today, as we come together to share and learn new ways to observe and record, I hope you'll take a moment and consider how far we've come. No longer stuck in some listserv or simple IRC channel, black swan hunting is a topic now shared by many. The ideas we'll share today and what separates us from the prying eyes of the users of the internet have grown tired of. The tools, that we, the tools we've developed are not unlike those of the marketers and the advertisers, but unlike those who observe solely for the sake of business, we use these tools to help learn something truly new to capture something special or unique. We, we aren't the all seeing eye of advertising. We're the ever seeking members of the Black Swan Hunt Club. And with that, I'll give you back the remaining time uh, that was allotted for my keynote uh, so that you can have time to refresh your coffee uh, and prepare to learn from your fellow hunters. Thank you. Dave, thank you so much for joining us today and for that amazing keynote. Uh, and we'll... Uh, We'll make sure to send you over a copy of the recording uh, for your use at, at a later time. Um, Thank you. And with that, as Dave said, that he's going to give uh, everybody back some time. So go grab your coffee, um, you know, take a, a slight break and we'll be back shortly. Adam, if you want to go ahead and share your slides, uh, we'll give it just a few minutes. And when I come back on camera, I'll introduce you and you can take it away. <laughs> 